think Mark Tone originally when I didn't catch a touchdown pass last night. Everybody else did. <laughs> Um, good afternoon and welcome to the Department of State. Uh, a few things to touch on first. Um, the Secretary this morning participated in the Security Council Ministerial uh, on Sudan uh, in New York, and as she said, we believe that full implementation of the comprehensive peace agreement provides the best chance of preventing a return to conflict uh, in Sudan, and Sudanese leaders must take responsibility to ensure the full and timely implementation of the uh, referenda. Uh, the United States has already taken important steps to demonstrate our commitment to improving U.S.-Sudanese relations. We have changed our policies to ease the sale of agricultural and irrigation equipment to Sudan, and we have supported the creation of a group to work on ways to ease Sudan's national debt consistent with international debt relief practices. As the Secretary says, you know, as Sudan fulfills its CPA commitments, we are prepared uh, to do more. And if Sudan commits to a peaceful resolution of the conflict in Darfur and takes steps towards peace and accountability, we are prepared to offer Sudan a path uh, to the ending of U.S. sanctions. This afternoon, uh, the Secretary has just touched down at Andrews, and uh, this afternoon she will meet with Austrian Foreign Minister uh, Michael Spindelegger. We expect that they will talk about a range of subjects, including uh, Austria's continued contributions to peacekeeping missions in the Golan Heights, uh, our efforts at stabilization and reform in the Balkans, and the importance of police trainers to the mission uh, in Afghanistan. And this evening, uh, the Secretary will welcome to Washington uh, Foreign Minister William Hague. Obviously, they saw each other this morning uh, in New York as well, uh, and he will have uh, bilateral uh, with uh, the Secretary tomorrow here at the Department, uh, where I expect they'll talk about uh, ongoing efforts in Afghanistan, uh, updating of the situation in the Middle East, uh, continuing concerns about Iran's nuclear program, uh, our, our mutual efforts uh, regarding Iran, I'm sorry, regarding Sudan, uh, and uh, preparations for the summit later this week uh, in Lisbon. Uh, you know, we, we love weddings here at the Department of State, uh, and we look forward to seeing another one uh, next year. Um, Turning to uh, Russia, you know, today we mark with sadness uh, the one-year anniversary of the death of Russian lawyer uh, Sergei Magnitsky, who died of apparent medical neglect in pretrial pre detention in Moscow's uh, Batrysky prison. While we welcome President Medvedev's statements of support of judicial reform and the rule of law, we note with regret that no one has been charged in connection with this case despite a justice ministry uh, investigation. The United States continues to call for the Russian authorities to prosecute all responsible for Mr. Magnitsky's death and protect the fundamental rights of all, including those in prison. Turning to Guinea, uh, obviously, you know, we've seen the provisional announcement that names Dr. Alpha Conde as the winner of the recent uh, second round of presidential elections. And it is our understanding that rival candidate uh, Chelu Diallo plans to contest the election results. Uh, and we certainly encourage uh, Mr. Diallo to, uh, to use the proper legal channels uh, and uh, register his concerns with the Supreme Court. Uh, we encourage both Dr. Conde and Mr. Diallo to urge their supporters to remain calm and allow the court to evaluate uh, any uh, irregularities. And finally, the United States remains gravely concerned about Iran's continued harassment, detention, and imprisonment of human rights defenders. For example, we understand that the trial of human rights lawyer Nasrin Sotudeh uh, is reportedly underway, but it is proceeding without the transparency and due process <clears throat> guaranteed under Iranian law. Iran's leaders should know that their efforts to silence those Iranians who stand up for the rights of their fellow citizens uh, does not go unnoticed. We once again join the international community in calling for the immediate release of all political prisoners, including those imprisoned for defending detainees or speaking out against human rights abuses and urge Iran to afford its citizens those rights that are universal to all people. Do you have um, any um, response, reaction <clears throat> to Senator Kyle's statement this morning that uh, he doesn't think that um, START should be uh, voted on in the lame duck session? Uh, it, it remains uh, the Obama administration's belief that uh, uh, the START, uh, new START treaty is in our national interest, <clears throat> um, and uh, we believe it should be voted upon 
uh, in this uh, lame duck session. Uh, we've engaged senators uh, for uh, many months over the details of the treaty. Uh, we believe that we've answered all of their questions. Uh, we've addressed their concerns, including concerns that Senator Kyle and others have expressed about ensuring uh, that there is an effective modernization program uh, as a companion uh, you know, to the New START Treaty. Uh, and we will continue uh, our dialogue with the Senate, but it is our firm view that the START Treaty should be ratified uh, while Congress is in session. Well, are you disappointed? Or while the Senate is in session. Are you disappointed or surprised in, at, at his comments? We've, we've engaged Senator Kyle and others in good faith and will continue to do so. But our message is that the START Treaty should be ratified uh, now. Do you, are, are, are there any plans for the Secretary or anyone to um, speak to Senator Kyle about this? Or is that a White House thing? Uh, the, the Secretary had a conversation uh, with Senator Kyle uh, last week. Uh, along with Vice President Biden, uh, and uh, I'll defer to the White House, but I would expect that we'd have uh, further discussions with Senator Kyle and others. Did you understand after that meeting with Biden and <clears throat> the Secretary that uh, Senator Kyle might uh, not take the position that he's taken now? Well, I, you know... Um, but by all accounts, it seems that the administration's kind of been a bit sandbagged here. And that you didn't expect that you thought Kyle would go along, and now he's come out. And well, we we believe that we've we've addressed uh, his concerns. We've negotiated in good faith. Uh, we believe we put forward uh, the kind of package that uh, uh, ensures that we'll have a uh, a strong nuclear deterrent uh, going forward, uh, and and we'll continue these discussions with uh, uh, you know uh, all of the uh, the 100 senators who uh, will have the opportunity to vote on the treaty. Are you willing to consider amendments to it? We, well, we, we, have, we have addressed uh, all of the questions that senators have had. Right. Uh, we, we've made clear to, you know, many have questioned whether, uh, you know, the New START Treaty in any way inhibits us from uh, developing a missile defense capability. Uh, Senator, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Secretary Gates, Secretary Clinton, uh, others have assured senators that that is not the case. Uh, <clears throat> we believe that this treaty is in our national interest. Uh, we'll continue these discussions, um, including with Senator Kyle, and we believe uh, at the end of the day uh, the treaty should be ratified. Okay, my, my last one on this. When you say that you've addressed their questions, is it your view that you've addressed them satis to, to their satisfaction? Well, we, we, we'll continue. To the extent that Senator Kyle still has concerns, we will uh, be willing to continue uh, you know, to uh, uh, engage with him and, and assure him that we, uh, we've, we believe that we have sat satisfactorily answered his questions, addressed his concerns, and, and put forward uh, a combination of actions that uh, can assure uh, that, uh, that our security will be protected and, and that the START Treaty is, is uh, definitely in our national interest. Can I follow up on that? Can you confirm the report that the administration has offered to provide an additional $4.1 billion to help modernize the nuclear Arsenal uh, I'll, yeah, this, I'll defer uh, those kind of details uh, to the White House. Sort of in the same category, um, Thailand's extradition of Victor Boot to the United States has been met. Sort of in the same category? Yeah, well, <laughs> we're still talking about the start treaty. Russia. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a lot of people in Russia really angry and frustrated at this decision. Some saying that this could get in the way of um, the reset relations between the U.S. and Russia. Your reaction to that? Well, I, I, you know, um, we, we have uh, uh, a, a broad and, and deep relationship with Russia. It is guided uh, by our mutual uh, national interests. Those national interests overlap. Uh, uh, we understand that uh, on, on a, a number of issues, uh, uh, you know, we, we agree to disagree sometimes. Uh, we have tensions that crop up periodically, and we work uh, to, to manage those. Um, I, I don't expect that uh, uh, this will have any impact on our um, on our relationship but with Russia. But they say this was illegal. They say this was the U.S. bullying Thailand and that this move uh, was totally against the law. Uh, it is uh, fully consistent with both our um, <coughs> bilateral uh, treaty obligations uh, with Thailand and fully consistent with international law. Did, this come up, uh, um, did the case come up at all in the meeting that the Secretary had with Foreign Minister Lavrov in Hanoi? Uh, Rest assured, this I, I can't say whether it came up in that meeting. We, we are we are aware of uh, of how uh, the Russian government feels about this. 
uh, and so, so they've spoken to you today directly, or are I, you just I, going by the? I, I don't know if they've spoken to us today, but but you know, they have spoken to us on this issue. Change of subject. Uh, the Israelis are still waiting for a written offer or proposal from the United States to discuss the settlement freeze. Have you sent them this proposal? All right, Michelle, I, I missed the first part. Yeah, the Israelis are still waiting for the written proposal from the U.S. I, you know, um, I, I'm not going to get into specifics as to as to where we are. Uh, we're we're trying to uh, encourage both sides uh, to get back into uh, negotiations. As the secretary said yesterday, uh, the status quo <coughs> is unacceptable. We want to get them back to negotiations. We still believe that. Uh, uh, an agreement can be reached uh, within the 12-month you know, uh, period that the Secretary outlined back in August. Uh, but in order to, to get to the agreement, we have to get them back into negotiations, but I'm not going to give a play-by-play -play from here. Uh, a follow-up uh, on this. The, uh, the Israeli government, too, has uh, blamed the Palestinian Authority for thwarting the, the, the understanding between uh, Secretary Clinton and uh, Prime Minister well, Netanyahu. Look, have we, you got any we, reaction from we, the Palestinians? We, our efforts are to get both parties back into direct negotiations as soon as possible. Uh, we are engaged with the Israelis. Uh, we have engaged with the Palestinians. Uh, our message to both is the same. Uh, get back to direct negotiations, work through the core issues, and get to a, uh, a just, a fair, and uh, equitable settlement uh, and agreement within 12 months. PJ, without getting into the specifics of what is being proposed, <clears throat> is it correct that that, uh, that, that the Israelis are a, have asked for a written uh, proposal? Again, a I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk about... This has about nothing to do with I, any I, of the I, I understand. I, I, I understand. Are you prepared to give them a piece of paper that outlines what you're willing to do to get them back to the table? To get them We're prepared to do everything that we can uh, to create the conditions for uh, both the Palestinians and the Israelis to have confidence to return to direct negotiations. Including giving the Israelis some kind of a... Uh, again, I just said I'm not going to do a play-by-play -play from here. Look, we're not, the, I, you know what, we're I, not Matt, being asked. I, Look, the Israelis have come out and said they're not going to vote on this tomorrow in the cabinet because they're waiting for a written proposal. I, I failed to see how it would affect the negotiations if you say that, yes, you're willing to consider giving them something in writing. We, we, will, we will continue uh, you know, to work with Israel uh, to address... Uh, <coughs> you know, it, what it, it sees as its legitimate interest in this process. We'll continue to engage with the Palestinians and address uh, the Palestinians' interest in this process. We want to get them back in negotiations. We're trying to create the conditions to do that. Again, I'm, I'm, you know, as to where we are today, where we might be tomorrow, uh, we, we have not talked about the substance of this uh, and, 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 you know, <clears throat> and will not. But the I, I guess I just don't understand how well, <clears throat> this gets I, I, into the I, substance of it. Well, I, a piece I, of paper, whether you're willing to write something down on a piece of paper, is not the substance of, is not substantive. It's not a substance. That's not a question about the substance. I'm not asking what the words are that are going to be on a piece of paper or that might be on a piece of paper. Just asking if you are willing to to to, to give them uh, something written down. We we will do everything that we can, uh, you know, to encourage the parties to get back into negotiations. Uh, just, just to follow up and try it from a totally different angle, do you think you can do that without giving them a piece of paper? It's <laughs> <laughs> a very good question. <laughs> Gordon twice canceled his appearances, which he was going to talk about uh, U.S. Yes, and we and we apologize for that. <clears throat> Although I, I believe that actually, uh, in about a half an hour's time, the reason we you know, we we canceled the two briefings first of all uh, was because uh, uh, his first briefing would have overlapped with the secretary uh, at uh, uh, in, and her intervention uh, in New York, and and as we found out uh, at the start of the day, the White House is actually doing a call. I believe at 2:45, yes. um, and since the secretary's schedule and the president's schedule, you know, significantly overlap, we, we will defer you know, to our colleagues at the White House. There are only two, three days left for Lisbon, Lisbon summit, NATO summit. Uh, my question is: Have you, uh, has your administration heard uh, any assurances from Turkey whether they are going forward with the missile system? 
Um, I'll defer to the uh, to the White House call at 2:45 to go through uh, preparations for Lisbon. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, missile defense is is one of the areas uh, where we've talked uh, within the alliance in, in anticipation uh, of uh, uh, of uh, Lisbon. Okay, uh, there's a report due out tomorrow from the U.S. Economic and Security U.S. China Economic and Security Review Commission. It says that on April 8th, for a brief period. 15% uh, of the world's internet was routed uh, or rerouted through Chinese servers, Chinese internet servers, and that .gov and .mil uh, websites were affected by this. Uh, have you seen this report? And, no. And, you know, what's your reaction to it? Does the U.S. have a, an effective cyber uh, defense against China? I think that's a better question to ask uh, the Department of Homeland Security. Well, has there been any dialogue with China on this issue in particular? Any, any, are you pressuring them in any way to offer some answers here? L let so me see what I can find. Uh, let me see what I can find out. I, 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 I don't. I'm not up to the speed on that. You said um, um, in. It's, I'm not asking about a piece of paper. Don't worry. Um, you said that you still think that you can meet the the, uh, the the secretary's timeline of 12 months, but that's a bit of a different story than what you said yesterday, which is that you weren't no, sure I, 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 I don't know that it was a a different story. I, I, I thought I said yesterday that our goal remains yes, to complete an agreement uh, in 12 months, and and that that remains our goal. Um, you know, is there is there a guarantee of success? There's not, uh, and it, it will ultimately be up to the parties. Uh, you know, to make the difficult decisions uh, to get to an agreement. But our, our goal, ha having seen some of the coverage overnight, our goal remains, uh, you know, 12 months. Ten months. Nine months. Nine <laughs> Samir. Is, uh, is Secretary Clinton taking charge now instead of Senator Mitchell in the efforts to convince Israel and the Palestinians? Well, the, uh, you know, we, we have the... Uh, 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 the luxury of a, a very deep, high-level bench when it comes to these issues, you know, starting with the President of the United States, who made a commitment to uh, pursue comprehensive Middle East peace uh, on day two of his uh, administration uh, by naming George Mitchell as uh, a special envoy. Uh, you know, the President has been deeply engaged. The Secretary has been deeply engaged. We have George Mitchell and others. So we have assembled uh, an all-star team, and we are putting on a full-court press uh, to get the parties into. Hail Mary passes. We expect to score major points in the next nine months. <laughs> um, but, but look, you know, the, the, obviously, you know, the secretary spent several hours with Prime Minister Netanyahu last week, uh, and. Uh, uh, you know, a, as needed, uh, you know, she will be personally and deeply engaged in this. Uh, uh, but we have David Hale uh, in the region, you know, today as we speak, uh, and and others. So, uh, you know, this just demonstrates our ongoing commitment to uh, to proceed to proceed with uh, comprehensive peace, and it and it really does require uh, uh, you know more than one player, uh, you know to get the parties across the finish line. <laughs> what, what, is, what is David Hale doing? Um, uh, you know, uh, I, I can't, I, I, I don't know that David has had any uh, specific meetings uh, so at this mean? point, but he's in the region, and I would anticipate he'll be in touch with, with the parties uh, in the coming days. About what? <laughs> Well, is he over there the, on vacation? The, 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 the topics under discussion um, in, in a, a variety of formats. So, so, who, so who is he going to meet with? <laughs> Again, I, I'll, as David has, I, I talked to David this morning. Uh, and well, the Palestinians uh, are under the impression that he's going to be meeting with them tomorrow. Is that correct? Uh, I, I, you know, that, is a, that is a possibility, yes. And will he also have a meeting with the Israelis? Um, David frequently uh, connects with both sides while he's uh, in the region. But again, I, as uh, David has meetings, I will, I will uh, right. lay well, them out for you. To what end? I mean, are you hoping that his meetings, that his meetings there will uh, bring, will result in, will result in the Israeli cabinet voting uh, on, a, on a new freeze? Uh, 
Right. And the Palestinians well, saying, we, okay, we're we, going to we, go back we, to the table? We want, Is that the goal? We, we want the Israelis and the Palestinians to return to direct negotiations. Um, and we are engaged with both sides uh, to encourage them to do that. Uh, we will continue uh, that engagement, and we will continue uh, that encouragement. <clears throat> Please. <laughs> Will you comment on uh, former Secretary Colin Powell's uh, criticism of uh, the present government policies in Pakistan, in Afghanistan? I, I'm, you, you'll have to help me. I, I haven't, uh, haven't seen. Uh, he, he's told one of the uh, channels uh, yesterday that uh, we, our support to Pakistan is inadequate. Use the word, and uh, and also, and he said that the U.S. should give money to the chief of um, uh, Pakistani military. I don't understand why the U.S. should give to them. Well, I, I, to I'm, I'm reluctant to comment on, on, uh, yeah, on, on um, what, a report that I have not seen. Uh, we have significantly expanded our uh, assistance to Pakistan. We have continued uh, very robust uh, uh, military and security assistance. And we have augmented that uh, with uh, very significant uh, assistance to uh, strengthen uh, Pakistan's civilian institutions uh, and help Pakistan uh, expand its economy. Uh, and and uh, um, we will continue to do everything that we can to help Pakistan advance. I, we, but we think we have a, a very robust uh, combination of civilian and security assistance to Pakistan that is helping Pakistan deal with a a very significant threat, which is a threat to Pakistan as well as a threat to the United States. No, but just a follow-up, uh, should, should we wait for later in the day? Because uh, the second uh, is that bin, La bin Laden is still at large because the U.S. Army has not caught him, you know, so. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure is there a question there. He says it is because we haven't caught him. Uh, the bin Laden is still <laughs> that, out there. That would be true. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so is it, is, how do you take it, like, is it that you know where he is and you are just letting him around? Uh, um, <laughs> look, we, 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 um, we, we continue our, our, our hunt for an interest in, uh, in capturing Mr. Bin Laden. Yeah. Please, um, I want to take you to Latin America. The question is concerning the Argentina. Uh, yesterday, the Argentina government uh, announced that, announced once again, that is going to negotiate its debt with the Club of Paris, something that the Department of State several times requested the, the country to do. Uh, I would like to know if you have any comment on that, if you are happy with that. Here, start it again. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, yesterday the Argentinian government said once again that it's going to negotiate its debt with the Club of Paris, mm -hmm. uh, something that the, the Department of State several times requested the country to do, the government to do. And so I would like to ask you if you have any comment on that, on that if you are happy let me, with Let me it. take the question. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just uh, um, not up to speed with where we stand with respect to Argentina and the Club of Paris. Okay. I'll come back to you. You spoke about a certain uh, trial case in Iran, the lawyer who's being put on trial and about human rights violations in Iran. Um, has the release of um, Aung San Suu Kyi in Burma sort of uh, encouraged the administration to be a little more outspoken about human rights in Iran in addition to other places? Well, um, I don't know that they're connected. Uh, we have spoken out about our concerns about uh, civil society and human rights in Iran on a number of occasions, particularly uh, you know, since last year's elections and the government's uh, uh, heavy-handed uh, response in the aftermath. We have spoken out repeatedly about human rights uh, in Burma uh, and uh, also about the uh, case of Aung San Suu Kyi. Um, we speak out about human rights in other countries as well. So uh, it, is, it is part of the, the uh, priority and emphasis that we put on that issue anywhere in the world. There is a draft resolution at the General Assembly in New York right now on human rights in Iran. It bears the name of 38 countries. Um, would you happen to know which country or how many countries initiated that draft resolution? I, I, I do not. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Charlie. Uh, 
All right. I just want to know if you have an update on, in terms of Haiti, uh, reports of clashes yesterday, and I don't know what's going on today, but the UN, uh, UN forces and people attacking them and clusters. Uh, I don't. Ha I don't have an, uh, an update. I think the uh, uh, the situation has calmed uh, overnight. Um, you know, clearly uh, uh, concerns are on the rise, frustrations on the rise. We understand that. Uh, you know, the number of uh, you know cases continues to rise. The number of hospitalizations, uh, you know, continues to rise. And and tragically, the the number of deaths now has crossed over uh, one thousand. Um, you know, because of the uh, cholera outbreak. Uh, we continue uh, to work uh, extensively with the government of Haiti. Uh, in the last uh, uh, you know, day, uh, you know, the Center for, Centers for Disease Control has launched a, a training program to expand the number of people that can provide uh, you know, significant assistance you know, to the people of Haiti, help them understand the steps that they can take in terms of, of, of personal hygiene, uh, treatment of water, and so forth, which are uh, central to uh, uh, you know to arresting uh, you know the uh, the cholera outbreak. Um, there's also an aggressive um, you know public information campaign uh, to help you know, the the, uh, uh, the people of Haiti understand what they need to do and and, and where they can go uh, you know for assistance. Um, and and in the meantime, we continue uh, to bring in uh, to Haiti. Uh, you know the kinds of uh, of simple but effective uh, you know measures, you know, hygiene kits, soap, uh, you know, water, uh, wash basins, uh, you know, rehydration, uh, you know, kits, the kinds of things that can help us help the people of Haiti, uh, you know, treat the symptoms of of this to, of this outbreak. Clashes between UN forces and no, yeah, I, I saw I saw that you know um, you know th there there is obviously an investigation going on to try to determine the source uh, of the outbreak and as far as I know that investigation is ongoing and has not reached any conclusions. Last few days there have been a number of clashes between Moroccan troops and local population in Western Sahara. Uh, so far, the all the information about the incidents is um, like very confusing. Uh, I would like to know if you have any specific position about the issue which is uh, going to be discussed today in the UN Security Council, and also the fact that these clashes are raising some tensions between sure. the allies of the United sure. States. Especially no, and and, and uh, as I as I recall, the 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 UN envoy will be reporting, uh, you know, today to the Security Council uh, on his uh, his recent findings. Uh, we we are concerned about. Uh, you know, uh, violent clashes, but uh, that is also why we continue to support the UN process to, to try to you know, mediate the situation in Western Sahara. And the, the accusations uh, from Morocco against Spain saying that this instigating the revolt? Or uh, uh, you know, again, but we, we, uh, we look forward to hearing you know, the envoy's report and, and we continue to support uh, the UN process. A broad proliferation. What will you ask me about now? Well, is the uh, does the administration still think that it's important for Pakistan and India to sign the CTBT and the Non-Proliferation Treaty, um, or ratify, much sign and ratify? Let me take that question. Okay. I mean, I mean, we we support uh, you know CTPT. We've uh, encouraged Pakistan to uh, uh, sign on to the uh, fissile material uh, cutoff. Uh, regime, uh, uh, but I'll, I'll get you a specific one. Uh, specifically on uh, on CTBT in India and the Non-Proliferation Treaty, which it has, which it, which it refuses to sign. Um, I'm curious as to what the position is and how that position, which I think has not changed, which is that you do want them to sign, how you can reconcile that with support for <laughs> India becoming a permanent member of the UN Security Council. Okay, that's well, the question. Well. Um, we, we I don't, recognize we, that the we US do not, has not we don't see those as, be, as being at odds. You, you don't, you, and you don't. No. You think that India has the same, given the given the president's interest in non-proliferation and removing nuclear weapons from the world. You think that India has a has a uh, an equal <clears throat> equal well, the, that its candidacy should be looked at equally with Japan, which has forced more nuclear weapons well, completely, well, or it, South it, Africa, which has it, given it, up. In, India weapons. India has shown itself to be a responsible global stakeholder and and. Uh, and the president announced our 
position on uh, India's uh, membership in the Security Council. Um, it, it, and and uh, our support for India is, is not exclusive of our support for uh, uh, other countries uh, as well. But uh, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll take that can, specific can you, question. It, it, sure. it might add into it whether the, I mean, it may not, may no longer be the administration's policy that you want them to sign on to these treaties because of the agreement that they reach with the nuclear suppliers. We, we, suppliers, we, are, we are supportive but, of, the, of the comprehensive test ban treaty. Right. And then my, my last one, which is on a different subject. Is there any update on the uh, P5 plus one meeting? Um, I think uh, I checked with the uh, EU this morning, and, and they are still waiting for a, an Iranian response. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.